Ooh, hello there, my fellow miners and crafters, Katan, so Scar here, and welcome back to the wonderful worlds of Hermitcraft, and we're here in Scar's Frontier Outpost, standing on what is the most incredible gift slash payment that has ever been, and I'm going on record to say, ever given to somebody on Hermitcraft throughout all the seasons. That is an entire beacon block. There's more diamonds down there. It is an entire block of diamonds and it was given to us by Ren for the terraforming and landscaping work we did at his base. It's just too much. This is the, I, I've never even seen this amount of diamonds in my life. Like I've never even seen a diamond beacon ever. So this is like the most extraordinary thing I've ever seen. I mean, first of all, can we even point out that he, this looks absolutely amazing the way he kind of disguised it into the landscape? He gets extra points for that because this looks really cool and it's really inspiring too because beacons can be very ugly, but this really kind of blends into the ground and looks really nice. Um, maybe we can even use this into our minds. Maybe it looks like something we're excavating out. It's an ancient, uh, you know, ritual stone, something like that. I don't know, but I think it could look absolutely amazing. But Ren, this is just too much, like absolutely amazing. Let's see what we have in here. Oh, oh we have a book. Hello, book. How are you today? Let's open up our inventory and let's read our book. Dear Scott. Thank you for your landscaping services. I'm a very happy customer and I'm delighted with the outcome. Please find your payment in front of the jelly. P.S. May this beacon of bling serve you well with future contracts. Ren diggity da. Ren, this is absolutely incredible. Like, <laughs> I, like I said, I'm at a true loss of words. You are amazing. And of course, if you guys haven't already, and I know you guys already are, but oh, Oh, I've fallen in a hole. Anyway, um, if you guys haven't already, definitely, definitely click on the link in the description and head over to Ren's channel. Follow him there if you aren't already. Ren's an incredible person, somebody I look up to as a person and a content creator. Um, Ren's a really great guy. And uh, if you guys aren't already watching him, you guys would absolutely love it. So it is time now to fly higher and higher to start looking at my crazy ideas that's right i have been spending the last three hours <laughs> working on this design and as you guys can see there's been a lot of planning going into this trying to make this absolutely perfect so let's fly down on the frontier outpost's brand new runways uh, unofficial runways by the way so this is an area I dreamed up as a train station, something that would look kind of cool for a frontier theme. And then we kind of created this whole kind of commerce style, um, you know, scars trading outpost style thing. So this is now turned into a depot. So this is going to be where we're gonna have train track running along the bridge right here. We're gonna have a big old train, you know, parked right here, getting loaded with logs and ore, and if Iskull's open to it, maybe even a car full of Escalium. I think it would be really cool to kind of tie his base into here with the Escalium. Maybe you guys could go ask Iskull if that's okay. Over here, I've been thinking um, under here, somehow incorporating our lower section of the base down there to the top. So maybe having cranes going deep underground, pulling up crates and different things from the bottom down there to the top to be loaded onto the trains back in this corner over here what we're going to have is a giant tunnel it'll help create the believability that this is a train line and these trains are crisscrossing throughout the mesa so we're going to terraform this all up and make it look like a beautiful train tunnel so it just has that extra believability built into it over in this corner over here, we are going to build a water mill and a little river and things of that nature, which is the sawmill, which is where the logs and all that stuff come from. So it helps create that believability, creates that story built into the world, and it kind of gives a purpose to why there's logs being loaded onto the trains. Um, you gotta always think of those little details. Like, so if we're gonna be putting logs on a train, it's gotta come from somewhere. So we're gonna build that up all over there and it's gonna look absolutely wonderful, I hope. And then crossing the train, this is where I spent a whole hour trying to figure this out. And I built this little design here and it was supposed to be for a train station. To be honest with you, it wasn't great. It's a little small and I decided to scratch it. And what we're gonna build now is a giant tunnel in this section. Now the tunnel is gonna work in a twofold situation. So the tunnel is gonna be built right here. And what it's gonna do is allow us to bend this style track because there's no real easy way of making a curve. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to have a tunnel be its transition. So it's going to go straight to here and it's going to make a hard turn like that. Now, that's not realistic for a train because a train can't just turn on a hard angle like that. But being in a tunnel, nobody's going to know. So it's going to be amazing. So now I have this crazy harebrained idea now that the new station is going to be over here. And this is a passenger train station. So in this section right here, my friends, is going to be a massive and beautiful train station that's for passengers. Passengers coming out to the outpost um, will arrive here. And then on this side over here, there's going to be a small dock, some deep, some small little cargo, you know, like luggage and things of that nature. And of course, a beautiful water tower, which we're going to work on in this episode. But that's three hours of planning, trying to devise, flatten and just figure this whole place out. And I want to open it up to you at this point. I want to know what your guys' thoughts are on this. Do you think that sounds good do you have any thoughts on what will make it even better i really want to hear from you guys and yeah that's kind of the plan for the next few episodes is to somehow put all of that into blocks and create something beautiful so let me get some supplies and yeah i want to hear from you guys in the comments and i'll be right back and let's get started right away. So the first thing we need to do is start building up the tracks. Now I'm gonna build the tracks up in the section that is right in front of the train. So we're gonna build a platform. Now the platform is what we're gonna build the train station on top of. And it's gonna be around 50 blocks long. So that's what was really the kind of the tough spot in designing the station over there is my ideas just got too big. So <laughs> it's not the easiest thing in the world to build on these little peninsulas and try to contain my imagination into these areas because I can get a little wild. Like one thing is like it might take me a long time to ever get a build, you know, built and things of that nature. But I've got an endless amount of ideas. I mean, ideas are never an issue with me. I should open a shop like Scar's Ideas. <laughs> That should totally be a shop, Scar's Ideas, um, because I've always got ideas. It's just me being able to just build it and then, you know, just getting it done is always an issue. But uh, I do have the ideas. So Scar's Idea Shop is definitely should be a thing here on Hermitcraft. And welcome back. And isn't that the most amazing Western sunrise you've ever seen? That really feels like you're out in the West in the deserts. Oh, I absolutely love that. Look at that. Absolutely incredible. Anyway, as you guys can see, I've got the track all built up and ready to go. And now this is the spot that we talked about before being unrealistic. And that's why we're going to enclose it in a tunnel. So I think that'll look out. Look out. Ooh, no, that will look amazing, Scar. Anyway, so as you can see, we built this little section right here. So more some just mapping out, getting some details arranged. So the platform we're going to build is going to be a little bit of an interesting one. So let's kind of get into it a little bit. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to kind of build up a little pattern like this. OK, this is just kind of a little idea I came up with as I was kind of clearing and measuring. And what we're going to do is we're going to take out a couple of materials and kind of see where it takes us for a moment. Um, I'm going to put this temporarily there. And what we're going to do is we're going to start extending this outwards like so. So what this is, is kind of a platform you see like at a train station. You know, this part sticks out a little bit. And if room if room allows, we could even pull this out even a little bit more. But then there's that little gap down there and it just allows the train to come right up to the platform. And I think that'll look really, really, really cool. Now, adding little extra bits of detail here and there. That's why I would love it if we can just add that extra little acacia wood down at the bottom. Now, you might be wondering, what about this whole orange and, you know, yucky kind of design down there? Now, we're going to terraform that all out of there, get that all landscaped into something beautiful. Oh, I thought I heard a creeper. I thought I heard a creeper. <laughs> did you hear that? Come on. No, no. Did anybody hear that? It sounded like a sizzle. <laughs> it sounded like a sizzle. Anyway, um, so from this block right here, see this block right there? All the way down to there is 20. And then from this block, oh, the way down there is going to be 50 blocks. So that's how far the platform is going to stretch. And then for the top portion up here, we're just going to, you know, save on some extra wood. So we're all going to use half slabs. I try to remember. I try to be economical. Um, sometimes I forget to do, you know, floors like this and half slabs to save on wood um, and all those wonderful things. But uh, when you do remember it, you're always feeling good about yourself. You're like, yeah. I was environmentally friendly here on the Hermitcraft server. We didn't put anything to waste. Um, but uh, yeah, I think that'll look really cool. Um, like I said, this would be kind of boring. So I'm just going to put this whole thing together. So 20 by 50 and let's get it going.
of super fast build mode and as you can see from above the platforms are built up and ready to go and I'm really really pleased with the way they came out. Now I know at first thought they look incredibly out of scale, they look gigantic. But believe me, once we start building the details, once we get the landscaping installed, everything will look awesome and ready to roll in. Hello, guys. And uh, yeah, so I think this will look really cool. So this is kind of where the main ticket booth will be right here. Then on either end, there'll be some awnings and there'll be some chairs and all sorts of wonderful things. Now, on the other side over there, I haven't quite decided. I want to kind of run this by you. So what we could do is some small awnings along here, just a couple few of them and then some chairs under them. Or we could do that more as a small cargo area. That's an area for luggage and small pieces of cargo, not major things we'll do at the depot, but just small pieces. And we could do a little crane maybe right there. Um, just let me know. Let me know. Do you guys like the idea of just making this entirely passenger related so that there would be, you know, little places for people to wait for their trains or put some more cargo over here? Um, one thing I want to do for sure is create a little staircase that goes over the track. And so you can kind of cross from this side of the track to the other side without, you know, going into the danger zone. So I don't want to do that. Anyway, over in this little section right here, I've considered I'm just trying to come up with as many ideas as possible today. Today is an idea day. And right here, potentially make a broken bridge. I don't know. This is, this is a funny idea. Potentially build, you know, a bridge, but it's broken because it's such a large expanse. And I really want to build a bridge all the way across. But I could build a broken bridge. It only goes about a quarter of the way. Sounds kind of amazing to me. But that's up to you guys. Anyway, let's start building the water tower. So I'm really, really excited about this because I posted this on Twitter and you guys really liked it and he gave me some great feedback. So I've made a couple little modifications. I think you guys will absolutely love it. So as you can see, this is a five by five design right here. And then I believe we're gonna take these pillars up about five blocks also, which I think will be really nice. And let's see, that's one, two, three, four. And let's pull this up to five like that. Jump down and ready the roll. There we go. So. Today's been an idea day, like I said, a day where we can kind of come up with ideas and I hope that's okay with you guys. Let me uh, hear your thoughts on that in the comments. Um, I just wanted to spend some extra time today and to really plan out and master plan the whole build. And I think that's incredibly important when you're building, especially in a really confined, very difficult space to build on. We're on top of peninsulas. There's not a lot of room on top of these to build. So it just takes a lot of time to really figure it out. If we were in a flat area, my gosh, my friends, we could do some amazing things also. Dual tracks on either side. There's a lot of things we could do, but we just don't have the room and that's fine. I like a challenge. Challenges are great because when you have a challenge, it really kind of makes it uh, just that extra little bit of fun in your build because it puts you on a little bit of a deadline or a little bit of a challenge. And I think that extra little bit of challenge brings out creativity in you. You might not have had if you just have just this blank old easy street to roll down. Um, but uh, yeah, like I said, I, I think that a little bit of challenge is good, uh, especially when building or being creative. And speaking of ideas, like I said, I wanted to know what you thought of, you know, just an episode where really in the beginning took down our ideas and really thought heavily about them and I like that that's my favorite thing in the world is being kind of a guy that comes up with ideas because that's what I wanted to do for my entire life was to be kind of a person like that who came up with the ideas the concepts for movies or theme park attractions or things of that nature um, I really wanted to do that either in animation or at Disneyland style or, uh, builds you know the Imagineering or Pixar and that's that was my dream my entire life. I worked towards that dream, but you know things don't always work out the the way you want them. You know, with health related things and stuff along those lines, it kind of takes it away and it can really bring you down. But recently, I really thought about this, and I'm almost able to live that out through Minecraft and YouTube. And it's kind of an amazing thought that I recently came up with. I was like, you know what? I didn't really lose that 100 percent through Minecraft. Oh, geez, wow, my scaffolding, my scaffolding skills right there, guys. That's on par today. Let's just use the hardened clay. It might be a little easier. Um, but like I was saying, you know, playing Minecraft and building these things for you guys is kind of like what I wanted to do was to create things that make people happy. I recently listened to John Lasseter talk. And if you don't know John Lasseter, he's a uh, I man. He is uh, he's like the second coming of like Walt Disney He's an incredible like genius, not only as a creative mind, but also a person that can I think there's a rare type of person that, that can see potential in people and, you know, really inspire a group of people to do their absolute best. And that's what John Lasseter is. And that's exactly what Walt did to his, when his people back then was to really inspire them to uh, really create amazing things. And John Lasseter was talking about how, you know, accolades and box office and, 
you know, all the award ceremonies they go to, but there's there's nothing more special to him anyway, is to see, you know, a kid in an airport carrying a Woody doll or, you know, carrying Buzz Lightyear and things of that nature. And that that's what really makes him happy. And it's the same for me is when I see somebody leave me a nice comment about how the video, you know, inspired them for their own builds or just made their day a little bit better. Like that's the true thing. And that's exactly what I wanted to do when I wanted to become an Imagineer or a, a Pixar, you know, work as a concept artist was just to make cool things to make people happy. You know, that's all I wanted. That's all I want to do with these videos is just to make people happy. Just to, just to give somebody something to do, something to get their mind off of a, a stressful day or something like that. And I realized that, like I said before, is I kind of got that dream a little bit, you know, through not being able to do exactly what I want, but through this, I can, you know, be creative. I can come up with those ideas, those big concepts, you know, for our frontier outposts with trains and logging industry and all of those things. And it's it's kind of cool. And I'm, I'm really grateful for the position that I am in to be able to do these things and to never take it for granted at all, because um, this is a special kind of a almost a once in a lifetime real opportunity to ever be able to, you know, make content for a, a large amount of people that enjoy it and hopefully makes them uh, inspired for their own build in Minecraft or just like I said before, puts a smile on their face or a laugh or anything along those lines. That's just special. And um, I just have to thank you guys, of course, for giving me the opportunity to do this stuff. And uh, it means an absolute ton to me. So as you can see, this is one, two, three on either side. And then this is one, two, let's see, this is one, two, three. And then there's kind of this little space in between and then another set of three. And that kind of makes up the water tower. Now, this is a little bit different than the one, of course, in Scarland. So it's quite a bit different. Uh, but I think that's coming out really cool. Now, train water towers are a little bit smaller, a little, little stout and squat, maybe. They're a little lower to the ground, a little bit wider. Um, because they need to be filling the train. So the big steam train is going to be about right here, and then it's going to have like a little nozzle that comes out over it, which fills up the steam trains, you know, boiler, so it can make the steam and make the train go. So kind of cool. Let me slip this night away, and let's finish up our water tower. And welcome back to Beacon Craft. Look at all of those beacons. Whenever I come out here, and they're all showing up. It's incredible to see all the different colors, and of course our super tree in the center. But let's get back to our build here. And as you can see, I was mapping out our roof line a little bit. It's a little complicated, so I was trying to kind of play with it a little bit to figure out our way. Um, I think I've got a solid idea now on how to accomplish this roof. So let's scaffold all the way up to the top here. And let's say, I guess this is where we haven't finished. <laughs> I'm going the wrong way. All right, here we go. So I kind of have these pieces built up along here. So we're about one, two, three, four. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these blocks up there like that and then scaffold up here a little bit farther. Um, but I think that'll work out. I think that'll work out. And then we can kind of bring those back together. So yeah, just create this one, two, three, and then bring these pieces around there like that if you're following along. There we go. So then up here, we can just kind of fill this in like so. And I guess if we want to get real technical, we could put some water in here. But uh, yeah, you know what? I think I might. I might. I'll, I'll do it off camera after we finish up. But I think I'm going to put some water in there. Um, because sometimes you can, especially with this texture pack I'm using, it does have some some sounds that you could actually hear. And let's just fill this all the way in there. Oh, perfect! There we go. I got cheap at the mo at the end there. I was about to not go all the way across, but I, you know, I, I decided we're gonna we're not gonna we're not gonna be cheap with our slabs. We're gonna use them all up. Okay. So now the most important part, and this is the whole reason this water tower is here, is to fill up trains for their boilers. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring out a little spout. We wanna do this nice. We wanna do this about as nice as possible. So we want the end of the spout to go directly above this piece of the track, directly above the center. And of course, if the train is a little higher than we suspected, I think this should be a good height for the steam engine. So this should go right above the boiler. If not, we can always move the tower up a little bit. It'll be much harder to bring the train up. Can't really bring the train up. That's that's not really a thing, but um, we can easily bring this piece up here. So let's see, I'm actually going to cut that piece down for now. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use some of our iron fences. And man, isn't it amazing what we can do with iron fences in a single piece fashion. I just love this. This is one of the best changes Mojang has done in a while. There's the Goodwill's Knight. Um, but yeah, I, I think that is definitely one of my favorite things they've done recently is that because it really creates that realistic chain feel. And I think we can just do some really cool things with that. 
uh, without being in modded because you know modded there are some chains and stuff like that that are really useful for building but uh we just we're so limited here in vanilla sometimes and it's uh, nice that we do have that functionality now there we go so i'm going to click this onto there and then for this i'm going to run that all the way to here i'm going to cut out that piece and connect it right there looking good my friends look Getting good, so I think that's going to work out for that. So the theory behind this, let's take a look at this from a distance. So as you can see, this piece comes outwards and it's holding up this, which can kind of go up and down depending on how high the steam train is. So that's that's the theory behind it. Um, so at least there's some rhyme, some reason to the design. So let's back up here a little bit. And I want to put down a little spout. And if you guys can think of a better spout design. There's something I could put on the on the tip of it just to make it look a little bit more like a spout that you would be filling up a boiler with. Like, I'm all ears. I'm just here building. You guys can let me know. Um, so I'm going to put this right there and then I'm going to extend this out one more block. I think I'm going to extend that out one more block like that. There we go. Let's take a look at that. I think that's good. It's a little long. It's a little bit longer than I wanted. See, this was three blocks. I wanted that only to be two. I think I'm going to cut these off. And I think that, okay, there we go. That's it. That's it right there. That's it. There we go. It's amazing, isn't it, how one block can, can destroy a design? Isn't that crazy how you can make one little mistake or one little block in the wrong spot and it just kind of throws the whole design askew? And there it is. I absolutely love that little thing. Isn't that cool? It's a simple structure, but I think it really conveys kind of a frontier feel with the acacia as the tank design. We have the dark oak as a support structure. And then, of course, some highlights in it with some of the milk chocolate built up on this platform. I feel like this is really, really cool. And I would love to get you guys' feedback on that. Uh, but according to Twitter, you guys like this design that we posted a little while back. Um, but look at that. I'm really, really inspired and I hope you guys are too as much as I am about this project and uh, where we're going with the whole design and of course the uh, the video series here because I'm just I'm just having so much fun planning and designing and I really hope you guys are enjoying it as much as I am. And there we go, my friends. This has been Good Times with Scar and I always appreciate you guys taking the time to watch my videos and if you believe the video is already, that would be much appreciated. And until next time, we'll see you later.